So my name is Gabriel Montefalcone. My name is Mohamed El Zubeh. I'm Andres Larriu. I'm Astrid, Astrid Wang. My name is Pooja Pramar. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm from Hong Kong, but I'm currently in South Korea. I'm from Rome, Italy. Right now, I am in, I'm still in Princeton. I'm originally from Sudan, but I, but I grew up in South Africa. And I'm from Monterrey in northern Mexico. So when it first began um, in January, everyone, uh, people were quite scared. Um, there was like a wave of fear that everyone just stayed home. Like the streets were pretty empty. But as like Korea managed to control it, and Korea has been one of the best countries to control it without even having a lockdown. So ever since then, the citizens have been, you know, out and about. Basically, we reopened this week so places like nair salons and like haircut places and stuff have reopened and um yeah so like people are just going out and getting their nails and hair done uh the uh, businesses like restaurants and like stores and i guess like even these like my dad told me when he went out that they're still like maintaining social distancing so like they there's still a line outside the store because they only let a certain number of people in or they might like restaurants might ask people to space out or whatever but like I haven't gone to any of the restaurants or places yet so like other than like grocery stores which are like becoming a little bit more populated I can't really say about other things except that it's open. In my state things are still very things are still closed but that's because the federal government ha like the, made it like an official list of essential businesses that had to be shut down even if my case specifically you know like our curve has been generally flat we haven't had that many confirmed cases, um, even though we are like the country overall is under testing, but in the state we're pro we're doing a lot more tests than the rest of the country is, and we also have a better healthcare infrastructure than the rest of the country does. So Mexico overall not doing that great. My state specifically, obviously not good, but not as bad as it could have been. So Italy, it's been. Uh one of the first countries to be hit, but at the same time, we're still struggling to reopen. Uh, things are starting right now to open uh, in uh, most, in all the regions, but the regions are still, um, you're not allowed to, to travel between each region. Um, Milan is still a little different situation because the reality is that the only big problem in Italy is still Lombardia, which is in the north. Everything else, it's, uh, it's now with less than 100 cases per day. Um, so. Things are, but, but Lombardia is still like with almost a thousand per day. So things are, re are reopening, but like just essential businesses. The lockdown we're, we're under has, has been quite strict. Um, and, they've, and they've set it up into like five different phases. And now we've moved on to level four. And um, they've, they've lifted a few of the restrictions. So you can go outside jogging like between 6 a.m. and, and 9 a.m. But if you if you go jogging at a at a different time, like you run the risk of being arrested. No, actually, for me, it was not because I actually arrived two days before they issued the 14 day quarantine um, policy. So I came in, but obviously I also um, self isolated myself. I left on the Monday after, after school closed. So back then, um, there weren't as many flight restrictions. All the other guys from Italy and from Princeton were able to go home. Um, but um, it would have been pretty annoying, pretty complicated after I, I landed because I would have had to quarantine myself for 14 days immediately. And uh, but apart from that, to be honest, the, the, I think that Italy has, has done a good job in like helping out all the all the people that are were not in the country to get back. At least for me, it was, um, and for my family, it was because you know coming back from international airports in the Northeast, I flew for I, I chose to fly from Philadelphia since there were a lot less cases there than in New York. But even then, we all knew the risk. So as soon as I got back home, I was locked in straight in my room. And then I actually did test positive for COVID. So um, I was fine, I, it was very mild. And 
everyone in my family was fine since we contained it as soon as possible. But I did test positive for COVID. So I had to stay in my room about four weeks to make sure that the symptoms had gone by and that I had received a negative test. Over the last like month and a half or so, like since I've, I've come back from Princeton or like two months, um, I've, I've left the house twice only. Only for jogs, even though I try to do exercise with a mask on, which is <laughs> kind of hard on its own, but it is what it is. Everyone's just out on the streets. Everyone's following social distancing protocols. I mean, we are going out, but everyone's wearing masks. Everyone's, um, I mean, we're keeping we're like two meters apart. I've been staying at home um, other than like grocery shopping or like walking around. I haven't really gone out um, to like other places. I will be going out actually in the next couple months because of my internship that like the office where I'm working is still open so they're asking us to come in. So that will be interesting because I haven't gone out in a very long time. You know, in the US people really are upset about this lockdown for so many days, but it was never really a lockdown. Like, I wish they could see what happened in Italy. In Italy, my, my little brother got a fine one time, $200, because it was just more than 300 meters away from his house. So that was the intensity of the lockdown. and so. I, I'm lucky that I didn't have to experience that and I was able to stay here in Princeton when things were never really locked down completely. I guess like for the economy, it makes sense because there, there are a lot of small businesses in Atlanta that wanted to reopen and now that they can like make some money, but I still think that we're not safe yet in terms of this. Like I just, I get nervous to go outside even, especially because now that a lot of people are going outside, places are becoming more crowded. Like grocery stores aren't as empty as they used to be. Like um, even under quarantine, like people would only go out when they really needed to, but now people go out every couple days if they need to get groceries or something like that or every day. So um, it's just, it's a little scary to have things go back to normal. I mean, I knew they were gonna go back to normal eventually, but taking that step is like kind of scary and I don't know if this was like the right time to do it or not. They've actually been very, very efficient. Um, I'm very surprised at how they have dealt with this whole situation ever since like the, 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 the breakout from the epicenter. I mean, they took the warnings very, very seriously. They didn't undermine the situation. Personally, like within my state government, considering the limitations that have been imposed on my governor and the state's office by the federal government, I think my governor's doing all right because he immediately started warning. He like didn't try to twist anything. He immediately went aggressive as far as he could. He is being very clear, making sure that people are scared about COVID. Uh, I think it was very good in terms of um, the staying at home order. Um, the, they called it, in my opinion, when it was time to do it, like pretty f fairly earlier, considering that we were the first one to be really hit. And, but afterwards, I think that the response was pretty weak. Uh, in terms of the economic response and like how we're opening up things, it's too easy to just keep everybody at home. Uh, right now, Italy has had people at home for 48 days or something like that. Uh, but literally at home, people were not allowed to live or like just move 300 meters from the houses. So a lot of businesses are going, are struggling. Like we have had already two cases of people that committed suicide because of their businesses. Um, and, and it's just too easy, you know, like, okay, great response. You put us at home. Yeah, things are going well, but at some point you need to make some decisions. They started thinking about reopening too late. You need to think about the plan even before it's feasible. I, I wouldn't have immediately thought about it. Then you have 40 days to think about it. They start thinking, they legitimately admitted that they start thinking about it in May. It's like, okay, now we're going to start about thinking about reopening. No, man, you got to think about it two weeks earlier so that now you can be ready to do it. I honestly think that like it was, it was really good in terms of like uh, mitigating the, the virus and, and slowing its, its spread down. Um, but I, I also feel that they've, they've included, um, like laws and restrictions that like don't don't really make sense so for example to buy a stove or a or a fridge you you need to go you need to go get permission from your local police station a lot of people have have been saying that the that the uh, cigarettes and um, the cigarettes and alcohol ban is is nonsensical I wouldn't say like it's it's been that much of a challenge. 
I have definitely gone to less classes because I just listen to the recordings later on like faster speed, which is like nice. Um, it's really hard to keep like motivated to do things and do work. Um, I think everybody can relate to that. I'm lucky to say that none of my classes really require hands-on work. I, I, I just have problem sets or essays, which means that I can do that remotely very easily. I feel bad for people that have design classes or have to work in labs because they just can't do it. I could only attend probably 50% of my lectures since the time zone is exactly 12, 12 hours apart. And even though like you might have a lecture midnight, that itself is like midnight might not be late, but that it's just to concentrate in that hour. It's hard to, you know, it's physically hard. I've, I've mostly been speaking with them on, on social media, but it's definitely not the same as um, meeting them in person. It's been fairly difficult in the past couple of weeks because of like final stop period and uh, a lot of things wrapping up. And as much as I said that it didn't cause me too many difficulties, the working at home, at the same time, you are just less efficient. Uh, and so yeah, and, uh, I ended up having to always work until the last minute. So lately, lately, I've not been able to keep in touch as much as I wanted. Usually I would just call and we would have Zoom. Uh, we, I'm part of the track team and we, we kept um, doing Zoom calls every week with the entire team just to talk about things, how people were doing and stuff. Um, and we did the same. I'm also a learning consultant at McGraw and we did the same at McGraw. Um, and which was definitely a nice way, an interesting way to see how everybody was in, you know, was facing this, this difficult times and what strategies everyone was implementing. I mean, kind of the same thing, and which I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. Zoom has become my social network. <laughs> it's just meeting friends through Zoom and like trying to organize like small things and just calling people like that's it. I would say just daily exercise. It's really hard to, to keep talking to people, too, because, you know, virtual like just meeting people every day or Skype calling people every day, it's not the same. And you guys aren't sharing the same experiences, which you guys, we obviously all run out of things to talk about. There's only so much to talk about if you're staying at home in your room every day. So I guess friends do help to a certain extent, but I found um, exercising, just finding a way to, you know, just sweat it out. I feel like that really helped me. I guess the first thing was just acceptance that this pandemic is obviously out of my control and I shouldn't even like try predicting what is going to happen. And I should take in every day as is and just try to do what I can every day. Um, so that means journaling every night before I go to bed. That means trying to like plan like strict objectives that I know that I can do to make sure that I have a checklist of ways to keep myself busy. It also means just realizing that like, I'm lucky I don't have to have a job for financial reasons. I, I, I'm going to be fine this summer at least. And I can just like pursue projects, which I do have. Surely it was, um, there were so many things that I just needed to do, you know? Um, it would have definitely, it was definitely abrupt and I can definitely see how many people felt, um, you know, unmotivated. Um, and in a way, I think we all just wanted to be like, you know what, fuck it. Let's just forget about what we're doing. Let's yeah. just, just move on for the next year because it's just impossible. It, it was really difficult to be able to like motivate yourself. But in a way it was just sort of like surveillance, surveillance mode, you know? I just know I had to do certain things because I need, I wanted to graduate, you know, like there's no way I'm gonna graduate in a year right now with two months to go. And so that's what kept me going, to be honest. Being around my family, I haven't been around my family in such a long time. Um, and especially for like such an extended period of time. So like, that's been nice. And I've gotten to like, hang out with them and talk to them a lot more. But um, there's not like much keeping me going other than like the hope in July that we get an announcement that we get to go back, hopefully versus <laughs> staying online. It's generally been the fact that like, literally every single person in the world is is going through the same thing at once. So I'd say the feeling of global solidarity uh, has, has been keeping me going.